Well, hello, 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 everyone. How are all of you? Hopefully you're all doing well. So we're going to be doing the 5.4 patch. Alice's quest. Crow's eyes light up at the sight of you. Oh, greetings. Come to look in on your, our friends. Rest assured, everyone was quite well. I've been keeping a close eye on them and have satisfied myself that they are all in fine health. As a matter of fact, they're just about to convene in Dawn's re respite to discuss how best to use their pinup energy. Let's join them, shall we? Yeah, I won't go that far.
I mean, it makes sense. I, I like that. <laughs> no, no, fuck the stuffy meeting. When I set out to save Halric, I think Gabu was always at the back of my mind, and having proved that the light corrupted are not lost, I am convinced that the same must be true of the Tempered. Similar to those corrupted by the Sin Eaters, the Aether of Gabu's soul has been rendered stagnant, and though the root cause is different, perhaps the solution is the same. It is by no means an unreasonable hypothesis, Alice say and it warrants full investigation. If there's even a chance we can save Gabu, we have to try, but however much I'd like to race over to Limsa and set to work, there's no room for recklessness, not when a child's life is at stake. As I'm sure Beck Lug would remind us, we still know little and less about the soul. Any number of things could go wrong if we don't exercise due caution. And so, before attempting anything, we should learn all we possibly can about tempering. There's just one problem. Research into the condition has long since ground to a halt. And the combined work of many of the scholars involved doesn't exactly amount to a wealth of knowledge. Not of the modern scholars, perhaps, but what are the ancient counterparts? I know the elegants took a more than passing interest in the subject. And if what we seek is to be found anywhere, it would surely be at the Etherochemical the Research Facility. Where they experimented on primals and their worshippers? Yes, good thinking. I've never actually been there myself, but I did read the reports on Aziz Law, which means we'll be needing an airship. An airship, you say? Meet me on the northern bank of the Silver Tier Lake. I've got a little surprise for you. Oh, and come prepared to travel. What are we about to get into now?
It's a different style of airship than we've seen previously. I give you the Bonanza, the Scion's very own airship. I built her as a company project with help from our friends at the Rising Stones and named her for luck and prosperity. Tataru, this is this is amazing. We'll be able to fly just about anywhere. Uh, anywhere we want. Our garments were impressive enough, but to a build an entire airship? I see the annuals did not exaggerate to the amount many talents the science fabled coin keeper. I'd also introduce myself as your pilot, except the training didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped. But that's alright, because we've hired this capable capable fellow here instead. No, oh, I was expecting Sid. The Bonanza is well equipped with a full complement of ma mana cutters, by the way. Feel free to use them to get around to Aza's Law. But enough talk, it's time to fly. All aboard! Honestly, Sid would be jealous of the way the airship flies. Tataru has outdone herself. Anyway, here we are on Isis Law, and Alphano's report did not do the scale of this place justice. <sighs> Gratia surveys the surroundings with an expectant, expectant glint in his eye. This appears to be Helix, which means we stand in the Alpha Quadrant. To the east lies the Beta Quadrant, and... Yes, I believe I have my bearings. Though this is my first time on Aza's Law, I do have some familiarity with the place, thanks to the records in the Crystal Tower. Unless I am mistaken, this path leads to an Aetherite, beyond which there will be an information terminal. I suggest we begin our search there. And here is a terminal, a moment while I search the archives for reference to tempering. Ah, there we are. Iconic corruption, an overview. That sounds promising. Indeed, let us see what this report has to say. Hmm, confound it, the con contents appear to have been deleted. What? No. Wasn't there something you can do? Not from here, I'm afraid. But maybe that another copy of the report exists elsewhere. The question is where to look. It says here that the, here the report was written by someone named Owen. It is likely that he kept a copy. I would say it is a distinct possibility, assuming he was a researcher. He will have had quarters on the Havisphere. We can ascertain the details at the Havisphere control. Huh. Let's return to the Bonanza and avail ourselves of the Mana Cutters. We will need them to reach our destination. I forgot, you already have a suitable means of transport, don't you? No need no need to waste time accompanying us back to the ship, then. We'll see you at the Havisphere. Yeah, no, I don't. I have not actually finished getting flying, well, anywhere.
Oh, no, I have done it here. Okay, never mind. I'm an idiot. I think when I get it up and get a drink, I'll need, need to take a few short moment break to to mop my floor real quick. If the late Owen did indeed have a chamber here, this number will be able to help tell us its number. There, from what I recall of the layout, it should be somewhere in the vicinity of... Warning, an evacuation order is presently in effect. Entry to the Havasir is not permitted at this time. Wait, what? If I again, in all likelihood, the order would have been imposed during the fourth umbral calamity. And I doubt it will be lifted in the near future. Energy level critical, returning to base for recharging. Oh, well, surely there must be some other way to gain access. Force, for example? Ere we resort to that, I have an idea. Should, were we to send a surge of energy through yonder crystal mechanism, it should prompt the system to restart releasing the locks. As for suitable energy source, a concentrated lightning shard might suffice. Happily, I seem to recall that they are known to form at points of stagnant ether throughout the continent. You seem to recall. Are you honestly telling me that that was in the records, too? Ha, huh, I am. A report sent to the capital mentioned that the lightning expected ether was prone to pooling on the continent, resulting in surges that interfered with equipment. A minor detail, I grant you, but in my role as caretaker of the Crystal Tower... There is no such thing as too much elegant knowledge. Besides, my studies help me to feel connected to the source, to home. I must have explored this facility a thousand times in my mind, but to finally stand here with the two of you, tis more exhilarating than I can well express. Now then, the lightning shard, if I may. I suggest we split up and search the beta quadrant. Oh, but beware of sprites. They aren't. They are want to manifest where the aether is stagnant. Now you're just showing off, which makes me think we should make a contest of this. The first to return here with a shard wins. What do you say? Very well. It would be my honor to come third. That's the way to go about it.
Bravo, that was quite a show, adventurer. Why, the spe spectacle proved so enthralling that all thoughts of the prize slipped my mind. I appear to have forfeited our little race. Congratulations, the lightning shard is yours. Ah, uh, you remembered that. In my defense, I was caught up in the moment. It isn't every day you meet an honest-to-God's hero, after all. Well, the contest continues, so you'd be better hurry back. Ah, but one last thing. Thank you for bringing me here. It appears I'll say had no luck, so victory is yours. Congratulations now, then. May I have the shard? What is it that makes you so much better at finding things? What do you have that I don't? A map that magically tells me where everything is? That is a question I, too, have asked myself on numerous occasions. I suspect we could both learn a great deal from Illusion, and not only about the secrets of adventuring, but come, we should attend to our mission. Excellent, the system responded exactly as intended. We now have access to the Havisphere. Should they be triggered, only one obstacle remains, the security systems within. Should they be triggered, they could make life rather difficult for us. In light of which, pray leave the rest to me. I am, if I am right, my royal blood, blood should allow me to venture in unmolested. Assuming this place works like the Crystal Tower, yes, but if it doesn't, you'll be on your own. I need to promise us that you'll get out of the first sign of trouble. I promise. Wish me luck. Well, nothing for it but to sit tight. I'm sure this Owen fella was very learned, but Iconic Corruption? An overview sounds like a studium thesis. We all had to write one. Lest you wonder, mine was about the, the combat applications of Ether. I'm, I'm nothing if not practical. Alphanos was more philosophical, of course. Political, I dare say, dare I say it. He just read a lengthy disclosure on the, our nation's duty to the world. A controversial subject, to say the least. He asserted that Charlene's knowledge should rightly be used to protect all life on the star, in direct opposition to the country's cherished policy of non-intervention. 
Being a leading member of the forum, our father was not happy. At the time, of course, Alphanode was literally, utterly convinced of his views and would cheerfully argue to the death with anyone who saw things differently. By which I mean the rows were long. To be fair to him, though, he's since learned to be a little more open-minded, but deep down, he still holds fast to that one belief, and I admire him for it. I should have liked to meet the young Alphno for what it's worth. My thesis concerned the elegant civilization as depicted in folklore. Oh, you're back. I didn't know you attended the studium. I didn't. A thesis was required to earn my Archon's mark. My peers at the students of Odesian convinced me to write one with the promise of unfettered access to the forbidden tomes. Though I considered it no more than a means to an end at the time, I will admit it was gratifying to have my eff efforts acknowledged. Good gods, an Archon's thesis? I shudder to imagine the work involved. Well, enough about that. Is this the fruit of your foray? Yes, Owen's archive node. It was waiting for me in this chamber. If a copy of the report still survives, it should would be stored in this device. Shall we find out? Initializing, scanning for registered user. User not found. Proceed as a guest. Please complete biometric authentication. <sighs> Verifying. Authentication complete. Guest identify as a member of the royal family. I am at your most humble service, your highness. It never ceases to amuse me. Tis but a pity the effect will not last forever. Doga and Une said as much when they grant me this gift, but until such time as it fades, I shall use it gratefully. Search archive archive for iconic corruption. Searching when I'm found iconic corruption. An overview. The report is locked by the author. Please state password. Well, go on then, Your Highness. Tell the nice node the the password. The, uh, right, let's see. Glory be to Alag. Long live Emperor Xandi. Why not just write password? Password incorrect. Please try again. Confound it. Come now, passwords are invariably short and simple. For instance, Password. And watch it'll work.
The notion that the password could be something so inane would be laughable were it not dangerously stupid. Furthermore, your conduct in the presence of His Highness is grossly inappropriate. Know your place, handmaiden. What did that thing just call me? Password incorrect. Again, be warned that any further inappropriate behavior in the presence of a sinus will not be tolerated. Alright, that's it. I say we dismantle it and manually extract what we need. Now, now, let's not be too hasty. A single misstep and we risk losing the report altogether. I believe that this may be a task for Sid and his colleagues, but anyone can coax Machina into cooperating. It is them. Come, let us bear the node back to the Rising Stones. Reviving the legacy. Gratia seems eager to bear the note away. I should probably mention that I have yet to meet Sid since waking up. Brembos did send word to the Ironworks, but it appears our friend has been afield on urgent business. Nevertheless, I assure you my proposal to seek his, his help is no pretext. However much I might look forward to seeing him again, him and everyone, but come, let us be on our way. Look at him all but running. How sweet. So, one dude to keep him waiting, shall we? Where am I going? Back to the Rising Stones. No, that's not what to do. Wonderful news. Tataru contracted Sid on our behalf, and he is on his way here even as we speak. Oh, wait, I should like very much to hear what has transpired at the Alliance Council. Would you be so kind, Kryo? As you know, the meeting was convened to discuss how best to respond to recent events in Garlemald. According to intelligence from our Doman allies, the War of Succession rages on, and the Empire remains without a leader. Amidst the chaos, the Imperial Legions in the provinces have begun to move inadvertently, independently of the Motherland. Of greatest concern to us is the, is the Third, a legion aligned with Lord Nerva. It appears that they have received substantial financial backing from House Brutus.
Brutus, aren't the, they the ones who took in Yatsua and Sahi? This bodes well. Xenos' movements, meanwhile, remain shrouded in mystery. We're hoping that Thancred and Orange will be able to shed some light on his activities when they return. Until such time as they do, the Allied leaders feel it would be unwise to interfere in the conflict. And so, thanks in part to the Imperial withdrawal from Gimlet, they've decided to turn their attention to the primal problem once more. Working with friendly factions among the Beast Tribes, they hope to reopen dialogue and explore new avenues for peace. Given the timing, I suspect they wish to put their respective houses in order, ahead of a decisive clash with the Empire. Whatever their intent, that is not a problem easily solved. The Lamensons in particular struggle in their efforts, and Alphano and Ishtola have been called upon to aid them. So long as we are dealing with the tempered, I'm afraid no amount of dialogue will avail us. But if we can develop a treatment for tempering, then anything is possible. Which is why we must succeed. And on that cherry note, why not make yourselves comfortable in Don's res respite? I'll show Sid in as soon as he arrives. Sid. For guess we're not coming to see you sooner, my friend. As you may have heard, we've had our hands full. In our defense, you are rather, you are up rather early. I was under the impression you'd be slumbering a while longer. Oh, I would have been had you not, had you not fulfilled your promise. I still struggle with that idea. From where I stand, the secrets of traversing time and space seem exactly as unfathomable as they ever did. But if an alternate version of myself has already laid them bare, I dare say that frees me up to concentrate on their other endeavors. Speaking of which, you won, won my help with something? What? What is it? Well, well, a treatment for tempering, and for the next step, you need to find the password to this Allegan's report? Just so, with nary a clue to guide us, we could be here forever and still not guess correctly, and thus we turn to you. Well, I'd love to say that we could help you, so I will. Once suitably configured, a Magitech terminal should make short work of identifying the password. I knew I could rely on you. Now, anticipating what that might be of use, I took the liberty of borrowing a tomb, tome, uh, tome stone from Rambrose that contains an elegant dictionary. Good thinking. I'll transfer the information to a terminal and set it to work right away.
Ah, oh, looks like it's finished. Let's see. Freedom. The password is freedom. Short and simple, just as I said. Would you care to do the honors, your highness? I would, my lady. Node Owen Report entitled Iconic Corruption An Overview Password Freedom Password Accepted Opening Report This report seeks to provide an overview of the mechanism by which icons corrupt and bind men to their will. The phenomenon we would call corruption refers to the alteration of the ether of the soul. Said ether ordinarily exists in equilibrium, no one element being more prominent than another. But when a subject is exposed to the ether of an icon, this changes their soul taking on the properties of the entity in question. By way of an example, exposure to the ether of the fiend Sephiroth would cause a subject's ether to become aligned with the element of Earth. As a consequence, the subject would attain heightened affinity with Earth-aspected magics, as well as preternatural levels of endurance. Repeated exposure would further enhance these traits, ultimately altering the subject's very flesh. The changes undergone by the subject are not solely attributable to elemental alignment, however. Further testing has determined that the subject's soul becomes umberly charged or stagnant during the process. This stagnation of the soul has the effect of diluting the sense of self, rendering the subject vulnerable to the will of the icon, the thoughts of whom come to consume their entire existence. In this manner do the corrupted become worshippers of the, of the icon, their prayers serving to further empower the entity. Having discerned the mechanism of iconic corruption, my colleagues and I have set out to develop a mass material capable of shielding one from its effects, an endeavor in which we are more successful, albeit at a great cost. In the course of testing, many of my assistants, good men and women all, fell victim to corruption, and in accordance with the protocol, they were summarily put to death. I subsequently submitted a proposal to investigate potential cures for corruption, but it was rejected, deemed non-essential by Lord Amon. Though I knew it would be fruitless, I protested the decision, and for my impertinence I have been stripped of rank and title and will shortly be expelled from this facility. In all the likelihood, this report will be expunged from the archives. Nonetheless, I record it in hope that one day someone will undertake to do that which I could not and find a cure for the victims of iconic corruption. End recording. So not even the Allegans were able to find a cure, or rather they were not given the chance to do so. One cannot help but wonder what motivated Lord Amon's decision. More importantly, this confirms that stagnation of the soul is indeed the problem, and Angelo can remedy that. True, yet, were we simply to reanimate a tempered soul, I fear it would do not to diminish the individual's fanatical faith. Indeed, it may well intensify it. No, we would somehow need to suppress the primal's hold over the subject at the same time, or risk them ever remaining its thrall.
But of course, memory transference. The process has the effect of compartmentalizing memories, separating them into manageable bundles, if you will. By adapting the technique, it may be possible to achieve selective reanimation, that is, limit the effect to only those memories that existed prior to tempering. Through this, restoring the sense of self, we could theoretically drown out the incitements of false faith, which had come to dominate the individual's thoughts. I see, this theory seems sound, and our experience treating the light corruptor would help us to identify suitable memories for reanimation. But are you confident you can adapt memory transference as required? I seem to recall your attempts to do so while typing, trying to bring us home, culminated in li literal bloodletting. They did, you are right. Despite my best efforts, I could not recreate the mechanism, and I can see that the rather clumsy compromise I reached would not provide the basis for a cure. Then perhaps it's better that we consider another approach. Your doubts are understandable, but this time I believe we have reason to be confident. You see, nodes such as this were built with the ability to simulate magics. Which leads me to believe that it may be capable of performing simulations of the transference technique. If so, we'd be able to conduct years worth of tests within the space of a few days. That'd be cool. Hmm, theory would be no different from how we identified the password. But it would take more calculating power, a lot more. I honestly couldn't say whether our equipment would be up to the task. Tell me, Sid, why do you suppose Owen locked his report behind a password? To keep it from prying eyes, of course. Why else? Wait, a password that could be passed by anyone with a leisure and a dictionary wouldn't keep it from a person minded to look. No, he wanted his report to be seen by those who strive for freedom. Not unlike the members of a certain dis distinguished engineering collective, I believe their motto was freedom through technology or some such. You two, round up as many Magistic terminals as you can find and bring them to the workshop. Right away, sir, chief. Things are about to get very busy. Luck, lucky we have you to help, eh? Right, well, Grahati and I can figure the terminals. I want the rest of you to procure supplies. Namely, Cerulean to fuel the terminals and ice shards to keep them cool. The more we have of both, the better. Leave the archers to me, I'll round up some adventurers to go on a gathering spree. In that case... Hmm. I'll trust Illusion and Alice with the Cerulean. Here's a promissory note for each of you. Take them to the Sky Seal Manufactory in Ishgard and the Cerulean Processing Plant in Thanalan. The people there will give you what you need. Yours is a well known face in the Holy See. I believe if it's all the same to you, I'll head to Thanalan.
You say in the Sky Steel Manufacturer, what is it you require? So you are after Ceruleum. In that case, please present the note to our engineer at the la airship landing. He shall be glad to assist you. Sterling, you've come to the right man. Fair warning, though, the price has shot up on account of the uncertainty with the Empire. So I hope you've got the coin. Well, now, a promissory note from the Ironworks? Don't see many of these. Not that it's a problem. It's as good as gold to me. Holy shit, he's just like, yeah, yeah. Uh, for some reason. Good. we can. Okay.
They ought to each their own. Yeah. Well, it doesn't, but we'll take it. Well, that can't be good. Well, then do something about it.
No, it would not be. Alice has the only one thing on her mind. At long last, we have our cure. In theory, at any rate, we cannot be certain until such time as we put put to the proof. But I'm quietly confident. Well, if we if we're to test it on someone, then I suggest Gabu. His symptoms are relatively mild. Yes, as long as we exercise due caution, it'll be fine. Without further ado then, let's make for Limsa. We've kept Gabu waiting long enough. On my main, I've been doing the... The Moogle Tome grind, which has been... A thing. When I'm done with my main, I'll do it over here on this character too, but... Where am I going, anyways? Not the right way to be going. I don't just need to do cheaper stuff on the, my main. What business have you with the Admiral's Lift? Tea and crumpets on the bridge, is it? And a in possession of permission paper? Signed by the uh, relevant authorities, are you? The Admiral's official quarters are no place for... If he's, nah, well, okay, so it's not there. So it must just be the normal area, is my guess, then. Which, before I go up there, since I'm going up there, I might as well grab all this stuff that I need. I'm lazy. I like crafting. I occasionally craft stuff, but usually it's just like I just do it for the uh, cosmetics that they can wear.
acorn cookie. Wonder how that would taste, an acorn cookie. I wouldn't imagine real great. So that's 13 to... Well, this is the moment of truth. I'll have our host bring Gabu to us at once. Hope so. Hey, if it works, it works.
Fry wants to go. Let's just end the meeting in a big fireball. Oh, that's good. Excuse me. Well, this seems as good as I need to have a rest.
Oh, well, that's good. But you can save more than you couldn't. <laughs> You're not any better. Just a moment here. Just a moment. The trace of a wry smile is visible on Estola's lips.
as you will be at pains to remind me, I have not paid Master Matoya a visit since returning from the first. But this seems as good a time as any. Come, let us make for our cave. Let's see what all we get done here. Okay. Wait, shit, this isn't where I wanted to teleport to. This is.
I take it you are ready to bear witness to the joyous reunion of master and pupil? Very well. <laughs> Don't think you were supposed to have said that any of that part. Yeah, pretty much.
Hey, Ellie, how are you? That would be an interesting concept there, Matoya. How did uh, the competitive go? Hey, Odie. Iron 3, congratulations. I don't really know where that actually stacks up in the rankings at all, but... Sounds better than anything I ever placed on, uh... Uh... Overwatch, because that's the only thing I can think of where I actually ever did, uh... Competitive and actually ranked in it. I think the best I ever did in there was bronze five, bronze four or five. All right, off to my old workshop then. Everything required to make your familiar is there. That may be, but no one has set foot in there since the exodus. I dread to imagine what has become of it. Oh, there's sure to be a handful of pharaoh familiars. It may have a monster or two. But nothing to trouble the likes of you. you consider cleaning up the place payment for my help. Fine, we'll do it. Good, no, good girl. Now, if there are any other objections, I suggest you run along to the maker's quarter. Also, when my Perot goes ahead to, le to let you into the workshop. You need only tell him who you are. One can't be too careful, after all. Off you go. Which I could never figure out how uh, how Overwatch really figured out the the rankings because I actually had had matches where it's like we won and I still lost rank, but I had had good performance. Oh, I'm sure with the way you guys are improving that you'll get out of that iron grouping fairly easily. I mean, I remember uh, watching you guys when you first started and... Uh, The matchmaking in iron is something special. How so? But as I was saying, um, I remember when you guys first, I started watching you guys first start playing uh, Valorant, and it was just like, you were doing about what Odie's doing now. Odie was doing, uh, unfortunately, maybe a few assists and not much more than dying. Um, but now he's get he's gotten up there slowly, but gotten up there to where now Odie's picking up at least almost, uh, trading back and forth, uh, what, maybe 75% of the time, if not doing better than that. And Ellie, you're now up there pretty much doing usually about as good as nine does the way we got mowed down in our final match was uh something where am i going anyways oh i need to go over there how how so how do you what happened in the final match you guys did
other team just dominated. I, I hate when it's just um, if whether it's me dominating another team, my team dominating another team, or another team dominating mine. It's like where is the fun in that? It's like I'd much rather play a longer game where it's more even. Really get those adrenaline levels pumping. Get that stress in your head. Win and lose by simple stupid mistakes that just you had to do something but thinking that may just be me and I like uh, like my dad taught me how to play Euchre uh, basically got four score points for someone Then once a night, once a night the planets align. Uh, you make a team forfeit round five. Like I said, I I've watched you, I've watched you especially, Ellie. You you've grown into quite the uh, the shooter. You made some amazing shots tonight. Uh, at least whenever I'd glance back and watch for a few moments, that were just outright amazing. Greetings, Ribbit. Welcome to my good mi mistress's relic. Pearl Rogo is my name, and I'm honored to be your guide. Then you'll find a space dedicated to the making of familiars, along with a cavern, wherein the requisite ingredients may be had. I must warn you, however, that the place is not played host to a single soul, much less a broom in over 15 years, and will, I regret, be in some disarray. But rest assured, my brothers, and I shall see to it that you do not lose your way now then. Only say the word, and I will show you in. I mean, it's like, I, I both at times enjoy getting wins from forfeit, but it's like, I also generally feel bad because to me, if there's a forfeit, it means that the matchmaking was just horrible. And unfortunately, I may have ruined those people's nights because the game screwed up. Although I was, uh, I was reading, this was a couple weeks ago, but because uh, Bungie's looking at bringing back skill-based matchmaking into some of their PvP modes, and the sheer amount of uh, stats that they're looking at to figure out your ranking or your skill level is enormous and just completely outrageous I I there's a bunch of stats in there that's just like holy shit I don't think anyone does that because they're not looking at just uh, at just like your KDAs they're looking at your KDA your uh your reaction time to various events they're looking at um, your gear level what weapons you have what weapons you use there was like 40 the way they worded it there's like 13 or 14 different things that were accounted into your skill rating
Oh, it was also your uh, uh, the amount of matches played, amount of matches won, amount of matches lost, so on and so forth. Uh, the way that uh, Destiny 2 is going to be deciding your skill ranking when you play in PvP modes. The, the sheer list of stats on it was astounding. But it was interesting the way they spoke about how... Because they were doing a meter of basically a total of 2,000 points. It went to negative 1,000 and positive 1,000. And in those stats that they were showing, um, the average person would generally be uh, around a zero ranking. And based upon all your stats, you would place various areas of that. But they found that um, if there was a skill discrepancy between one player and another of over 200 points there was like a 70% chance that the person who had the higher rank would always win any one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, by the time it got to a like 600 point difference, uh, it was like a 100% chance that the person with the higher higher skill rating was going to win any given fight. So what they're going to try and do is uh, match up teams that would have uh, an equal points value across the board um, and adding everyone's skill levels together. but would try to keep as many people under 200 point differences from each other just to try and keep matches fair and balanced uh, with only deviating from that based upon uh, how long the queue is taking. I would be actually interested to see where my... I doubt they'll actually post it anywhere, but I'd be very interested to see what they would actually evaluate my skill ranking at for that. All right, waiting for the queue to pop. I guess I can probably go do some uh, leave quests here. But it's like it's nice to see skill based matchmaking come back to Destiny because unfortunately the lack thereof it has really made the PvP not very fun at all. Cause right now they have it set to a connection based matchmaking and well about that. That means you get some really uneven matches. But Valorant, Valorant's an interesting game. Just because it's like, it, it's so not what I'm used to playing for any kind of shooter. And I understand, like, the science behind it and the principal ideas of how to play, but it is not an easy thing to do. Prowler is a pain. I mean, you're having fun, aren't you? At least I hope you are. Sometimes.
Well, I mean, what are some of the, the things you enjoy the most about? What are some of the things you dislike the most about it? You enjoy winning? You do not enjoy getting your pride torn out and shoved up your ear. I can understand that. I mean, usually that's why it's like if I run into rounds like or matches like that, it's like I try to forfeit and just get out of that because it's, it's like if it's not going to be if it's going to be a match where it's just going to be a drag. I'd rather move on and find a more enjoyable match. And I mean, I. I have at least enough sense of responsibility where it's just like, if I can't get, if there's no ability to forfeit a match or then it's like, okay, I'll just do what I can to play it. It's going to suck, but I don't, I can't abandon my teammates. Although there's a lot of games where I wish other people would follow, have that same kind of rule, but. Hydrate. Do I have any water right here by me? I am going to have... Well, even if I did have water right by me, I would have to get more. Um... Some jumping jacks, okay. Some push-ups, okay. Gonna have to make a beverage for those. Some more hydrates. And a happy fox. Let's see. Well, the quickest one to do right now is the happy fox. So we'll get that one out of the way. <laughs> You're not sorry. Uh, I mean, as much as it's going to suck to do all these, I'm not either. I, I've missed seeing that. I really have. And title changed. So what am I looking at in total here? Let's see, what are the... Okay, fine, don't do it there. I will have to 
pull it up over here. Okay, so these ones from way back when can go away. Delete those. So. Completed that part, completed that part. Let's see, I've got 40 jumping jacks to do, 25 hydrates. And it looks like eight or no six of drink okay so let's get some water let's get i'm also going to need another cup to uh for the alcohol okay There we go. Finish off that bottle of rum. Okay. Let's do the... Uh, push-ups first hopefully I don't miss uh, the cue but I gotta do 20 push-ups here It's been far too long since I've done any of these. <sighs> far, far too long.
risk of hurting you. With the cue having popped, we'll put the other five push-ups to later. Whew. Or did I miscount the amount of push-ups? I thought I had 20. No, I actually did all the push-ups and one more beyond that. Okay. We'll do some of the hydrates and then we'll do the drink and then we'll do the rest of the hydrates. <sighs> Thank you, Ellie. I'll do the rest of the jumping jacks and the uh, push-ups here after this instance. <sighs> this music makes me think of the... Um, of like old, old sci-fi invasion of uh, of alien species music. Yeah, usually ranks where you meet, in most games, is where you meet some of the worst people. Usually. I don't know, I really don't know how toxic people have been in, in Valorant, because I've had in-game uh, comms off. Ever since that one guy was playing rap music through through his comms, because uh, I don't want to get in trouble for copyright. Oh, they get hella toxic and unranked. I mean, I'm not saying I'm the best person to not use foul language, and but I mean, still, there are some things where it's just like I, I watch, try to do my best to watch myself because it's not right. It's just old, old things from where I grew up as a kid. Did not grow up in the most uh, accommodating space for other people and viewpoints. What am I supposed to do with this?
No, I remember uh, one night I was streaming uh, Predator Hunting Grounds, and the stuff one guy was saying was just outright disturbing. Like, absolutely disturbing. Uh, like, immediately after the match was over, I cut stream, I delisted the video, I edited out that entire match, just so that way I felt good about when I put it back up. So used to playing Bard. Here I am trying to play range, and I'm not going to work when playing Reaper. Although I'm sure Odie and Ellie are going there. How are you playing this badly? I got a lot of work, though, I'd, I'd have to do before I could play rank, though, on Valorant. Because I think I'm only... Uh, I think I'm only, what, level, like, 13 or so? Saw what? I keep thinking that I can just walk on those and I'll just do the thing. And I actually have to click the stuff. Thank you for the, the additional hydrate onto the list. Or a couple hydrates. <clears throat> Takes us up to a grand total of... 30 hydrates with five of them done so far. Only 30? I can still count that high. <laughs> well, thankfully, I'm not actually counting. I just got the, uh, the reward re review queue pulled up. And so I can... It just tells me how many of each thing I need to do. But thank you for a couple more additional hydrates. Well, this drink here is for the uh, the more expensive one, uh, which is basically where 
I drink al some sort of alcoholic beverage. Although that one, if I drank too much, I would cut off for the night at some point. I just don't really know what that limit would be. And honestly, I could believe Ellie on not drinking water. They don't that they don't believe in it. Not saying I do, I just said I could. Nine makes you do it, but you don't believe in it. I can believe in that. Well, I mean, there is water content in Coke. What am I supposed to do in here? It's like a non-consenting baptism of your throat. You actually don't drink straight water, you add what plants crave to yours, electrolytes. <laughs> Ellie's like, water comes from the toilet. Ellie, that, that isn't... I mean, in a sense, you're partially right. Because water you does usually go through a toilet at some point, and then through a water treatment plant, and then from the water treatment plant, back through the system to eventually go back through your faucet. So, not necessarily a completely incorrect statement, just missing a bunch of steps. So your faucet is used toilet water, that's worse. I mean, actually, yeah, probably. I mean, it's also gone through, like I said, chemical treatments and also uh, probably basically having gone, evaporated into the air and then rained back down. So usually what happens is uh, biological waste like that usually gets put onto, 
a lot of treatment facilities throw it out into uh, vast drying fields where they just let it uh, basically dry and evaporate the water back into the air and then let it come back down as rain. Um, others just like others feed it through a whole bunch of filters and other nonsense and then chemical treatment and even technically like the river water that you may actually get into your uh, into the water table for drinking is still usually very heavily filtered just because of all the chemical pollutants that are in your average river. You knew out nuclear pee pee poo poo rain. Uh, you knew outside sucks. I mean, outside has its niceties. It also has a lot of uh, a lot of bad things about it too. I mean, I enjoy going outside when I have good friends to hang out with, and but I personally, if it's just me, I I don't like leaving my apartment. You don't enjoy outside at all. It's a hundred and fuck you degrees outside and has been for like two months now. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of remember about the region of the, of the road you live in and yeah, that makes sense. For the most part around here, it's been in the mid 80s to mid 90s. Once it gets above 90, I'm no, I'm not going outside. Unless I'm going out and spending in the entire time in like my truck's air conditioning, no. You can't make me. But yeah, I, I don't blame you for not wanting to go outside at all, Ellie. Not with temperatures like that. Oh, shit. I screwed that up. <sighs> Ooh. 
Ooh, I made that a bit strong. You didn't even know that big block of dead was there. I, I kind of figured it was a big block of dead. I, I just made some mistakes in my head about where I wanted to move to, and I ended up in the big block of dead. I think this is the first time I've ever done this fight, so I don't think I ever did this on my main. <sighs> okay, thank you for the lurk, El. Or, uh, Odie. Yes, this is MSQ, because that's all I've been doing so far on stream when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV. Has been MSQ. Uh, this is the, uh, 5.4 patch. Or maybe I have. I don't know. I don't remember. Even, I don't remember exactly how far I am on an MSQ on my main anymore. You wish you were good at 14, you don't remember what you're supposed to be doing? Ellie, you're far better than I am. You don't think you did the last batch of MSQ that came out? I mean, I'll get to doing it at some point. I'm just so close to finally being able to get into Endwalker and actually see what's going on in there. Lots of walking to the end. Yeah, probably. Well, I finished all the alcoholic drink requests. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and finish this drink anyways. There we go. Walking from MSQ point to MSQ point until you get to the end. Thus, Endwalker. Probably the most simplistic way you could put that.
<laughs> You're hella useful. Oh, maybe once I get back into doing uh, roulettes and such, maybe we can finally uh, group up again and do some stuff. It's been a long time since we've done anything on 14. This is for you using my name in another world. Yeah, probably. Okay. Bottled water is what I'm going to dig into now. To meet the what? How many more do I have left to go? 12 more hydrates to go. Or, before I cut myself off, let's try and get the rest of these exercises done. Oh, feels really invigorating though, even if I, I am struggling to do, to do them. Even if I am struggling to do them, it still really feels really good to do so.
that, that completes the uh, the push-ups. Now I just gotta do forty jump jacks. Okay, I need a moment. And a sorrowful loss on Stream Raiders. But God, have I missed doing those. Thank you so much. So, so much. I know right now you can't see the smile on my face, but trust me, it's there. Unless you wonder, Master Matoya has returned to her cave with the Shtula. Hmm. They are as peas in a pod, are they not? <sighs> Alvno is eager to deliver the good tidings to Limsilaminsa. Well then, my friends, let's return to the Limsa Lamensa and deliver the good news to the Admiral. 
A word to the officer in Bulwark Hall should be sufficient to secure us an audience. Let's go, bring on those rewards. I can take it. Why, Lieutenant Fox, ever a welcome sight. Titans for the Armory say she is presently receiving guests, but for the science, I know she'll make an exception. Follow me. My friends, what brings you here this day? Is this true? By the navigator, a cure for tempering? As often as I've been in all this, you signs, I have not thought, have thought it possible. And yet it is, Admiral. We have done it. Here in Limsa, and production of more familiars has already begun. You have my thanks, truly. This will do much to ch advance the cause of peace. Yet I fear it will take more to close the rift twixt man and beast man. Bah, even to speak thus divides us. Welcome as it is, a cure will not guarantee re reconciliation between our peoples. For though summoning and the tempered may serve to fuel the conflict, they are but symptoms of it. If we are to resolve the primal problem once and for all, we must address the cause. We must strive for mutual understanding and find a way to leave our bloody past behind. Twas I who moved the, that the Alliance renew its push for peace. Since, there's a, since our ancestors came to these shores some 17 centuries past, we Lamentsons have been at odds with those who share our island home. Save for a brief moment of cooperation with the Kobolds, our history has been one of nigh constant territorial squabbling. Meanwhile, our struggle with the Sahagan for control over the seas has only grown fiercer. A matter made worse by the thrice damned calamity driving them to seek new spawning grounds. With survival at stake, each had no choice but to fight. And so I dismissed peace as impossible. Impossible is a word coined by the weak. I proclaimed to all who listened and then gave up. You and yours put me to shame. Since you led us to victory against the Black Wolf, you have achieved the impossible again, and again, and again. And I thought it high time that I followed suit. Hence my proposal to the Alliance Council. But no sooner did I reach out to our neighbors in Vilbrand than my own people sought to, th th sought to thwart me. You speak of the pirates who failed to attend the meeting. I, acting through a friendly faction among the kobolds, we had intended to seek an audience with a prominent patriarch. But the bloody executioners would not hear of it, 
and their absence sent a message to the rest. Though they are but one of the three pirate powers, they are the greatest, and any attempt at peace would founder without them. I am given to understand that their leader, Captain Welther, has been bedridden for some some while with an ailment of the lungs. Correct. In his absence, his right hand leads a man named Sickard, but recently risen to prominence among the ranks. Save for his distant authority, little is known about him. We invite him to speak with us more than once, but he will not come. I have tasked the Yellow Jackets and the Rogues with uncovering his motives, but they have learned not of value. Well, I guess we'll have to go figure it out then. We have a nose for the truth. Whatever this sickard wants, we'll find out. Truly, I would be much obliged. I shall look forward to hearing what you learn, then. Good luck! Oh, what tasty treats are you having here tonight there, Ellie? By the way of a first step, I suggest we split up and to split up and make inquiries around town. Someone must know this stickard. If you if you could approach the pirates, the rest of us will seek out merchants and adventurers. Um, they appear to be upstairs. Ah, it feels good though to have completed all those those reward requests. Some fettuccine tomato sauce meatball kit from Walmart. I I don't know the quality of like uh kit food from Walmart, but I mean otherwise it sounds good. Curious what sickard are you? As am I, my friend, as am I. Sadly, I know nothing of the man, save that the bloody execution, executioners experienced a marked improvement in their fortunes after his promotion. Quite how he achieved this is a matter of some debate. As you know, the thelocracy permits us to attack any garland vessels, yet these have all but vanished from the sea since the Empire turned in upon itself. In order to adapt, we Krakens have taken to trading with the East, but the executioners are less forward-looking. I cannot imagine they would willingly abandon the old ways. So how then are they lining their coffers? Whatever their secret, they are not like to share it with their rivals, but mayhap you will have more luck. Yeah, that'd be very fitting for you, Ellie. Um, no, that's not what I want. This is what I want. Now, if only I I don't know if I can if I can find a way to give you this skin, this punk paladin skin. I think that would really make it all the all the better for you. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not a giftable skin, so. I must have gotten it from some event or another over the over the time I've been playing. <laughs> Couldn't imagine what Punk Pelham would have to do with you. Uh-huh. I don't know. It was more actually the look rather than the punk part that made it feel more like it belonged to you. Hey, I want you want to know about Sickard? He's a wily bugger, is what he is. Found some clever way to make coin, they say, and traded it for Moonskate's place at Old Welfare's side. Not like that's literally your PSN or anything. There was a time we raced the executions for our pick of the Empire's fleet, but the Garleans are gone, and them days with them. Owned to which we've all of us had to look for other ways to make ends meet. With that jumped up bilge, a rat sickered landing the juiciest, whatever it may be. Not that we sirens are struggling, mind. We do well enough garden fishing boats from the fishbacks and other beasties. Get the first pick of the produce for your trouble, see? Quality stuff at a bargain price. This we pass to our sisters as we can't sail on account of getting old or wounded or with child, and they cook it up and sell it for a pretty profit. Simple. Oh, I miss the old ways, don't get me wrong. But when I see the girls with their little ones, I think to myself, a life of peace and quiet ain't all bad. I see everyone has returned. Now, who would like to go first? <sighs> so, just as their Imperial prey began to disappear, Sicker turned the Executioner fortunes around with a mysterious new source of income. Whatever it is, it's nothing to scoff at. According to a tavern keeper I spoke to, the crew have been indulging themselves as never before. But no amount of drink seems to loosen their tongues as to how they are coming by their coin. For my spoke, or for my part, I spoke with a reporter from the Harbor Herald. The publication has been investigating the secret of the executioner's good fortune and making little headway. Plainly, the executors do not wish the nature of their business to be made public. And I think I may know why. In the course of making inquiries on Honker's Alley, an interesting fact came to light. Just as the executioners began to enjoy better fortunes, the price of crystal went into sharp decline. A sudden fall in demand, I was told. Curious, I contacted Hori Boulder, who has been watching the movements of the Beast Tribes, and my suspicions were proven correct. <laughs> Despite ever-worsening relations between the Beast Tribes and the Thalassocracy, neither Titan nor Leviathan have made an appearance of late, suggesting that the Kobolds and Sahagan lack the means with which to summon them.
Do you mean to say the executioners are divesting them of their crystals? All indications point to that conclusion, yes. Though we have no hard evidence as yet, we must investigate further. Agreed, so how do we proceed? Oh, I have an idea about that. In fact, I've already taken the liberty of making certain provisions. Which I'm sure will be very interesting. Oh, I thought this was like a Walmart brand thing. No, that's a Rana brand thing. Okay, that might actually be a little more appetizing than I originally thought it would be. The search for Sickard. Elfno has the look of a man with a plan. During my inquiries, a disgruntled merchant informed me that a wholesaler of crystals had recently arrived in Limps Lamenta, offering wares at prices far undercutting the competition. After asking around, I was able to gain an introduction and will shortly pose as a potential buyer in a bid to establish the crystal's provenance. The man is due to be at Oshin's Embrace in Lower Lanasia shortly. I suggest we make our way there at once. I will have to bear that in mind uh, the next time I do some grocery shopping. Uh, I've never tried any of the Rana stuff, so... I forgot flying's are loud here now. I'll have to add some of their stuff and uh, to my next uh, grocery delivery and see how it goes. That appears to be a merchant with luck. Wait, if he truly is in league with the bloody executioners, he will surely be wary of those allied to the Admiral. The Scions, not least of all. Compared to you, to yours and illusions, mine is an unfamiliar face. Let me play the role of buyer. Graha is right, and even if you aren't recognized on sight, you look too genteel to be mixing with society's underbelly. Genteel, but very well. I leave it to you, Graha. Got business with me, cat boy? I, uh, you're the crystal wholesaler. Do 
That I am, but you're no merchant, so what do you want with the crystals for? Um, I err. Don't look at us, you idiot. You'll give yourself away. Oh, I see. You're a weaponsmith, am I right? You need crystals to make staffs like that fine smithsman you've got there. That's right, I am a dead weaponsmith, and I use naught but the finest materials. I bid you show, you show me your wares. Well, we don't invite just anybody into our storehouses. It takes time to establish trust, you understand. Look, I have a large and urgent commission. If the quality is satisfactory, I will not quibble over the price. All right, explain that no ordinary crystal adorning your staff, so I'll make an exception. Come with me. Oh. I still got to figure out what I want to make for dinner here tonight. I have some taquito things that I got in my freezer. I thought maybe about making those. It seems to be working. Let's follow them. Excuse me. They went into that tunnel quietly now. You won't find any finer, especially not for the price. <clears throat> Indeed, I'd expect to pay more than double for such quality. How could they possibly be so cheap? There's nothing unlawful about them, if that's your worry. They're from Gomoro, if you take my meaning. The stuff's as pure as it gets. You won't be disappointed, so how much do you want? Well, I think we're going to take about all of it. Taken from the kobolds, just as we suspected. That's enough. Shut your gobs and turn around, slowly. I'm Sickard, acting captain of the Bloody Executioners. No need to introduce yourselves. We know who you are, Scions. And we also know you've been chatting to the Admiral. Got eyes and ears everywhere, see? It comes with being the only true pirate crew left in Limsa. So, we've assessed you ain't here to buy crystals. The question is, what are you here for? You are bold to reveal yourself to us without knowing our objective, but that would explain your, your swift rise to power. You have spoken plain, and so I shall return the favor. 
We came here to learn why the bloody executioners opposed the, the Admiral's will. And we have our answer. Should Limsa Lamensa make peace with the kobolds, you would lose your, the source of your newfound wealth. <clears throat> That's right, just to remind you though, we ain't breaking any rules here. The law forbids us from attacking any vessel not flying the Imperial flag. But don't say nothing about beastmen. Only reason we keep our operation nice and quiet is because we don't want no one taking our business. Wait, just listen to the end, will you? For what it's worth, I have the highest respect for you and yours. Her, especially. While the Maelstrom was worrying about dirt in their fancy red clobber, you lot stormed Ogomaru and battered blatant titan himself. Raised a mug to you when you, I heard the news. <coughs> And now we're following in your foot footsteps. Making sure the beastmen never summon their stinking gods again. Practically your successors we are. When there were still Imperial ships about, we did our bit for Limsa and went after them. But with the Garleans gone, there's no one left to ply our trade on, except... The beastmen, so let us have that, eh? It's only fair. Well, not really. Contentious though some may find your views, it is true that you have broken no laws. Doesn't make it morally right. That being said, that being so, I see no reason why you should not state your case directly to the Admiral's face. Unless the acting captain of the only true pirate crew left in Limsa Lamensa has some other cause to hide in a cave. Hmm, well said. Well said indeed. <clears throat> Alright, I'll meet with the Admiral. I'll even provide the venue. The Astalicia. I trust she won't turn down the invitation. Alvin was keen to report back to the Admiral. I thought myself the hunter, but it turns out I was the prey. A timely reminder that the pirate powers of Limps and Limps are not to be trifled with. But that's exactly what pirates are supposed to be done with. You trifle with them. They trifle with everything else. It's only fair. But all's well that ends well. Grahatia is the most timely provocation, has the desired effect. And Sickert has agreed to a meeting. Let us hurry back to Limsa Lamensa and pass on his invitation to the Admiral. Your companions have already reported to the command room. Will you be joining them? Welcome back, my friends. What news? So they have been stealing crystals from the kobolds. My thanks for solving the mystery and securing a meeting besides. Suffice to say, I accept Sickert's invitation. I would have you join me as my guests. The future of Limsa hangs upon the outcome of this meeting, and I would have the science present to bear witness.
See, she's forward thinking. That'd be a mistake. He's in for a world of hurt. He really is. I am severely disappointed in Amazon for their lack of uh, uh, Rana stuff on their Amazon Fresh. But I forgot. Well, more specifically, the one guy forgot. Navy men.
Well, hopefully we can do that. Hopefully we can finally end the Empire and Xenos, since he's apparently alive again. So I had anticipated a duel, I did not foresee that Hilfir would intervene. But full glad am I that he did, to have been ashamed to kill the boy. Instead, the whelp has learned a valuable lesson, and we have made peace amongst ourselves. All that remains is to do likewise with our neighbors. For the first time in a long time, Merrowweb's course is clear. Now, I need hardly tell you, but any attempt to negotiate with the tribes is doomed to fail unless their minds can first be wrested from the grip of their gods. And so, in the meeting we seek to arrange with Kobolds, I'd have you free their leader of Titan's influence. Leave it to us, we will open his ears to reason. You have my thanks. Ere we proceed, there is something you should know. Some fifty years passed when the Sahagans swarmed at our halls in ever greater numbers. Limsa entered into a covenant with the Kobolds. To men shall go the bounty of the sea, to Kobolds shall go the, the, the bounty of the land. An ostensibly equitable arrangement, conspicuously lacking in detail. I, inadvertently or not, the wording was ambiguous, and we took advantage of it, moving in to claim the northern reaches of Lunasia, which the Kobolds believed theirs. Bloodshed followed, then bloodshed to answer the bloodshed, and on and on it went, till every elm of your brand bore the stain of our conflict. This is not history, you understand it. Understand? It is the present, fresh and raw, and with their kindred's blood yet on our hands, we will struggle to regain the Cobalt's trust, even should we cure their temper. Admiral, you speak of obstacles we are likely to encounter at the meeting, but as things stand, I see no reason why the Cobalt's would agree to a meeting in the first place. And so we must provide a reason. I will restore their stolen crystals to them, and personally deliver the cargo along with my apologies. Bait, they'd welcome us into their midst not to speak of peace, but to have you at their mercy. Aye, and given the wealth of crystals we will bring, I'll wager they will attempt to summon Titan there and then. I mean, makes sense. Meaning a high priest would need to be present to whom we could administer the cure. Precisely, he is the fish I would catch, but he will not be alone. Nay, he will have guards on hand, and they will lay down their lives to protect him. Yet a single death on the kobold side would jeopardize our chance at peace, and there my ventures my venture founders. Yet it need not. What if we were to employ the Conqueror's Chain? They would still have to weaken the Kobolds who would allow us to subdue them without inflicting lasting harm. The artifact misfit used to take goods and not life? Aye, that would serve. That would serve. Well done, Marshal. So, friends, what think you of our strategy? The effects of tempering are cumulative, and we may safely assume that the high priest's exposure to primal influence is extensive. 
It will therefore take a great deal of ether to reverse its effects, not to mention time. Time during which Alice would be defenseless, even should all, we all look to her protection, I am not convinced we could keep an entire army of kobolds at bay. Well, I'm not... Besides, it's what Tessalina would do. And had I not followed her example, we'd, we wouldn't even have her a cure for tempering. Much less a chance to bring peace to Veilbrand. So I'm going to cure that priest or die trying. And I believe in you too. You and everyone. I know you'll keep me safe. It is so then. See to your preparations and make for Camp Overlook. We will join you there anon. Okay, I need a moment. All that water's uh, making me need to go do something. Okay, I'm back. Thank you for waiting. Thinking about it, it's like not surprising I need to do that. Uh, I mean, adding it all up in my head, I've had about half a gallon of water. Because, what, a gallon's 128 ounces of fluid. I had two of these, which is 40. And then I had a bottle and a half, and each of those bottles is about uh, 17, they're about 17 ounces a piece. So, yeah, I've had about half a gallon of water. I mean, go ahead and bring it if you want, Allie. I'll, I'll drink the water. I mean, I have completed all the rewards that were sent my way already. Alfner wasn't lying when he said he'd be defenseless, so I'm counting on you to give give me the time I need. Our sole purpose will be to keep you out of harm's way, so leave that to us and focus on your own task. Indeed, and should you want for ether, you need only say the word.
Gabu, did you follow us here? Thank you for the 11 hydrates there, Ellie. There's something important that I want to say to the high priest. Express state. Say, please, let me come with you. Please. I'm sorry, but it's too dangerous. I need you to promise me that you'll stay here where it's safe. All right? My apologies for the wait. It took time, but we have secured our audience. All unfolded as expected. At the mention of my returning their crystals in person, the Kobold suddenly remembered how keen they were to be reconciled. And so, in the glorious spirit of cooperation, we are to be received by Patriarch Zada of the Second Order, who awaits our pleasure at the, in the naval. If you are ready, let us proceed to the Gomaru Mines at once. We'll have to grab another bottle of water here in just a moment to finish off these hydrates. Ooh. But I've got, I decide I'm going to make, uh, I got some frozen taquito things that I'm gonna make uh, for dinner, so I turned my oven on here. This Aetherite will bear us to our quarry. Should he, he make to summon Titan as I anticipate, we will halt the ceremony and restrain him. At this, all hells will break loose, and we will have an army of kobolds to entertain till Alice's work is done. Just remember, none must die. We will weaken them and let Einzar do the rest. It is time. Stay the course, my friends. I spy calmer waters beyond this squall.
Is that so? And that's, yes, she absolutely is. I absolutely agree with that. She is the best grand company leader. None of the rest of them even come close. Okay. Thank you for the lurk. Yes, you can, Alice. You're not your brother. Yeah, they don't take damage for shit.
I'll do what I can. Come on, let me get up. God, how much more do you need of me? I got nothing left to give. One way to find out.
hear, feel, think. You're not wrong. Fair enough.
not wrong. Come on, don't do it. We'll see what can be done.
Well, the Moonfire Fair has begun. It would seem we have found a way forward with the Kobolds. Next, we will help the Second Order to free their tempered brethren th from thraldom. Theirs is far from the only Order, of course, and will take no small amount of time and effort to reach the rest. But, reach them we will. However long it takes. I would say that I was in your debt, but that has long been true. So instead, I will say thank you for helping us to plot a new course, not only for Limsa Lamensa, but all Eorzea. Alphano's face is a picture, equal parts jubilation and relief. Come on, what's gone wrong? What bullshit am I going to have to try, go try and clean up? What the fuck? Okay, so I need to go to the Alamegan Quarter.
the fuck? Is that like a zombie Bahamut? That's really bad if it's a zombie Bahamut. What do you want? Not even a good villain, just insane.
the hell? There we go. Thank goodness everyone's safe. We've managed to put out the fire, though not quickly enough to save the garden. That was a beautiful garden, too. Rabon, can I leave it to you and send word to the Alliance? I'm going to take a unit and investigate the tower. We need to find out what it's for. We'll go with you. No, you won't. You'll rest, and from what Merle Webb tells me, you will do some time off duty. If we learn anything about the tower, we'll be sure to share it with you. Until then, I want you to rest. Merle Webb, if you need our help, don't hesitate. And take care, both of you. Back to more donuts. Ah, oh, you're back too. Good. We've received reports from the Alliance. Since we're all here, perhaps those who bore witness to the events in Alamigo could treat the rest of us to a first-hand account? No sooner do we overcome one problem than another appears. It would all seem tediously predictable, but for the endless variety of our foes... This friend Daniel duh, sounds v even more unhinged than his patron. Makes me think of Fandango. Unhinged, perhaps, but no fool. For all his pantomime theatrics, he gave away little about his plot. We know only that he intends to recreate the final days. And that the towers will somehow facilitate this. He also called his dragon Lunar Bahamut. Let's not forget that little detail. And the creature did resemble the descriptions I've seen of the Elder Primal. That may be true, but the fact that it answered to Fang Daniel would suggest they are not one and the same entity. I think it more probable that it is some manner of some, some Lockrum born of Ossian magics. Whatever it is, for now we can but work close with the Alliance and remain vigilant. I believe that concludes our news. What of yours, Ishtola? I've been to see the Sultana. Knowing how quickly mortal flames are to dispose of that they're tempered, 
I judge it best to provide them with the cure first. As soon as I had sufficiently recovered, I traveled to Uda and delivered the porxies to her grace, along with detailed instructions on their use. Yet my visit chanced to coincide with the rebels some troubling tidings. The immortal flames had been on the cusp of agreeing to a truce with the Malja when negotiations abruptly collapsed. The Malja claimed that a number of their kind had been adopted and that men are responsible. Not as known to the perpetrators as yet, but as the immortal flames went into about investigating the abductions, they came upon one of Fandaniel's towers. On the subject of the towers, you may be interested to learn that they are not an exclusively Orzian phenomena. According to the Alliance, they have been sighted as far afield as uh, Yangxia. Then it would seem reasonable to assume that they are everywhere. We simply have not found them. Well, as you said yourself, you can do little for now save remain vigilant. And since we are dealing with the dragon, ostensibly at least, I believe it would behoove us to enlist the aid of an authority on such foes. Asinian. Asinian, now just a moment. If he could be persuaded to lend us his lance, I'd be the first to welcome it. But the truth is, we will struggle even to find him. Uh, you let me and Crow worry about that. We'll stuff him out no matter where he's hiding. If indeed he is hiding, we have ways of locating him regardless. So, if there are no objections, we shall depart at once. Well, rather than sitting around, I think I might go tea to each of the city-states to ed educate them in the use of the porxies. They would doubtless appreciate, but might you consider taking a moment of rest before leaving? You would be fresher for the tasks ahead. Well, my friend, our moment of triumph did not last long. Was ever the way. The world often needs saving. And save it we shall. I, for one, do not intend to allow a nihilistic madman to take us all to the grave with him. Not when the future holds such promise. Nay, I will do all in my power to protect those whom I hold dear, just as you have always done. Meanwhile, somewhere in the locks. Something ain't right here. Wow. Okay, so now they're tempering in the name of Garlemald. Well, good thing we've got a way to fix that.
I kind of wonder how uh, Fan Daniel and Majma would get along. Wasn't that some like ancient heirloom of that he just broke? Okay, well that's it for tonight. Let's take a look and see who's out there to raid. Um. Oh, that's a face we haven't raided in a while. So... So we'll go ahead and raid Indecisive Fox. Um, when we move over, go ahead and copy and paste this into the chat. Uh, tomorrow night, we will be going, unless something changes, which can always happen, uh, we'll be playing more Final Fantasy IV The After Years. Uh, Till then, thank you for all the love and support here tonight. Hopefully we'll see you back tomorrow. Till then. Have wonderful rest of your evenings and show some love here to Indecisive Fox.